Hello everybody, welcome to Zelda Speedruns, broadcasting the Zelda 2 Randomizer Routing Royale Tournament. This is the Group B Finals between the Kalanis and Paratroopa. Commentating for us are Nightcrawler and Victor Santa Fe with the Alan Heffley on tracking. Say hello everybody. Good night everybody. So yeah, we have the very, very, very early finals of this group because this group was four people and one of them forfeited like one week before the tournament. And I lost. <laughs> I was I, I I reclaimed my my last place throne last night. <laughs> Losing to these guys by 40 seconds, if I'm not wrong. And it was a very close race. And let's see if this one is very close. That that's what's exciting about this group. And it is that our levels are pretty similar. So so yeah, this this is a death match. Anyone can win like last last week. I, I, I'm expecting a very close match. Let's hope it is. Yeah, you you were really close there. Um and uh you know since we're down to Countess and Paratrooper, they're both pretty good. So I I expect this one's gonna be pretty <laughs> Pretty close too. You can see the little triforces by by uh, a few of Countess's save files, just kind of showing off that he's played it before, I guess. But <laughs> if you finish it more than once, doesn't it turn into other things? Maybe he, maybe he didn't sure. want to use. They were discussing that that the that if you don't do a clean boot, the the order of the of the drops oh. change. But I, I think he he this is a save file, but he's doing a clean boot of it. But I could be wrong. And Countess is using his uh, Dragon Quest IV uh, heroin uh, sprite. Uh, he made that one himself. It looks pretty good. Not totally complete, but, but pretty close. Found Bagu right off the bat. Uh, no surprise there. But I guess he's going to be using uh, Suri as a pass-through then. Yeah, I thought it was the Starbucks problem. <laughs> <laughs> I could see that. I could also see, like, Statue of Liberty or something. <laughs> but no, no, no. Dragon Quest IV hero. Is you, you can choose if you play as a... Uh, as a boy or girl in that game, and that's that's what happens if you choose to play as a girl. Nice. That's really nice for a game of that kind. Yeah. Okay. You could do it in the, the game before that, too. Totally different strategies, though, right? Paratroopa's leveling um, on really weak enemies. Like, two experience? Is this the I, right... I guess he's going for the draw. Oh! oh. Yeah, I guess so. There's an encounter in this seed that gives you 1300 points. It has two blue Lysaphos, one orange Lysaphos, one Scorpion Max, and, and yeah, it's 1300 points for the Eastern Continent. Nice. About to use that Bagu letter to get across. And it looks like today's game is a lot more straightforward. You were saying that uh, the overworld is kind of trolly and the boots were going to be nice for that. But other than that, it looks like you pretty much just get the raft and you go east for everything. Uh, well, you, you get the raft and then I guess you gotta, if you want to get the boots, you'd get the hammer in the east. Then I guess you'd have to go back and get the boots and. Then pretty much just go east for the rest of it. Yeah, one of the things is that their raft tile is on the northern part of the continent, and the only way to access that part of the continent is either doing the Bagu thing and, and going through Saria, or uh, going through the fairy cave. And that one is pretty trolly for for, for the beginning levels of the game so so yeah that's why we see the players doing the bagu mm -hmm. 
Now, if you uh, if you saw Paratrooper right there um, passing through an enemy, uh, that was one of the Geldarms. They're the sort of worms, and they can be very difficult to see in the dark. Uh, not this one. <laughs> but uh, if you hit them immediately before you go into their hitbox, even if you don't hit their actual the actual part of them that hurts them, uh, it will make them still... Uh, you can still pass through them. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, the first hit is huge, no? Is, is yeah, right. Mm -hmm. You just have to get the time to right and you can pass straight through them. So yeah, we see Paratroopa going for the safe strats. He's now in medicine tape, he's gonna pick up a hard container. Wow, we see the count is sailing. He's going for it. Yeah, this is totally opposite of what Paratroop is doing. You know, Paratroop spent the first, uh, it, it wasn't that long, you know, like, like two and a half minutes or so, grinding, and Countess, um, and then, of course, Paratroop also picked up that heart container right there, and then uh, Countess is pretty much just going for it. Oh, almost took that bot, but it was only a, a bot, so it wouldn't have hurt that bad. So we see the Countess, I believe he's going for the hammer. Oh, got the jump spell, nice. Hammer, get, and yeah, up and A. Going straight for so those he's boots. he's going for like. the boots. So yeah, it, as I told you, especially the Eastern Continent, it, it's, it's very hard to navigate. Lots of caves that lead to each other and... and yeah, it, it is pretty bad, so, so that's one of the reasons I guess he's going for the hammer. Wow, that was a great walk from Countess. I definitely would have gotten that encounter that, uh, that he dodged. The, fir uh, the first one, or the second one. <laughs> he ended up. Yeah, the Countess, he draws his encounter manipulation strats, his walks on the map and he keeps the map open with all his walks in it. It's pretty amazing. That's some serious stuff, man. <laughs> That's awesome. I guess it makes sense if you're going into this like that. Uh, yeah, you know, knowing everything, uh, I guess you would know when and where the enemies spawn uh, after a reset. Yeah, at least you can kind of set it up in some way, set set up their, their behavior. I wonder if that slash at the beginning was to manipulate uh, the enemies. Because he's done that twice. <laughs> there we go again. Great walk. Jesus, I can't do this even if I do know what I'm doing. I'd, I'd freak out. The Countess is going to this boulder block cave where the boots are. Wow. See? This is... <laughs> you know, this is where Randomizer starts to look a lot like a vanilla. <laughs> Although I guess in vanilla you're not allowed to up an A quite as much, or... That, that's, that's super cool. Yeah, it depends on the category, but... <clears throat> the paratroop is sailing east now. Um, he probably doesn't feel like he's very far behind. We're only seven minutes in. Um, and he might not be behind, because he's got you know some pretty good levels behind him. But uh, basically everything that he's, he's doing right now, Countess has already accomplished. I guess both players will be using the boots. That that was one of my questions when I played this last night. If, if the players were gonna go get the boots and they are and they 
are not required. Uh, I finished the series without the boots, but uh, navigation, as I told you, is, is a nightmare in this one. I feel like Countess must have had more time to prepare this this uh, for this match. I don't think he did all these uh, walks uh, last time, but I might be mistaken about that. Yeah, he showed me a picture of the ones that, that, that he planned. And it was amazing. There were at least like eight or nine walks that he planned. Yeah, Paratrooper also picking up jump. Uh, that's a good. That's a good one. And Countess routing in the swamp uh, pee bag. That's pretty sweet. I in randomizers, I often tend to avoid that because you know you get. By the time you get there, you may not have jump, and you may already be on pretty high levels. So. And sometimes it's a one-up or something, but in vanilla you can route it in. Uh-oh, Countess having a little bit of trouble on this egg, uh, this egg farm here. Paratrooper, meanwhile, in New Kasudo, gonna pick up the first item in here. So he didn't up an A after getting the hammer. Oh yeah, the shield spell in New Kasudo. Yeah, Paratrooper is playing it safe. So, and, and before the, the race started, he was saying that he was a little bit scared because this was a very dangerous seed. As navigation was really problematic for me last night, I ended up with very high levels. So I, I don't know how survive, survivability goes in this one, especially in GP or things like that if you have lower levels. But, but yeah, Paratrooper is taking all the, all, all the cautions possible. And uh, J and uh, Trails here, you know, getting a little frustrated about the lack of gems being placed. Uh, I mean, we all know Trails would have already beaten this PC, but you know, for, for us mortals, you know, some of us have to like get items before to place gems. It's it's weird. <laughs> Not picking up the key there, I guess, uh, I guess doesn't need it, because Magic Key is in, um, Maze Island, right? Yeah, that is correct. Maze Island has the two most important items of this game. Which are the glove and the Magic Key. And, well, Paratrooper was picking up his downstep technique, and Countess already has it. And... Mm. It is not only for survivability, but in this seed, in Great Palace, it is required. Now, Trails, it looks like he doesn't have... he doesn't need any keys for P1, and he's just gonna clear it without it. Otherwise, he would've picked up that easy-peasy one. He just went into that room to the left to get the 100 experience so he could uh, gem abuse. Even if he dies here, it doesn't really matter, because he's got all his lives, I think, right? <laughs> well... Nice! That was good. Yeah, very, very different strat for killing horses. Paratrip is making his way through Heart Container Cave, so he should be picking up his boots in just a second. Making use of that shield spell, I think. Oh no, hasn't cast it yet. There we go, attack four. This is already totally different than Trails. Trails would have life seven, attack two. What palaces this guy choose? These guys choose. I believe I chose one, three, four, and six. But yeah, I was playing casually, so let's see what the guys choose. Neither of the palaces I did was especially long. Maybe palace four was a little bit long. But... Well, this one's gonna I, be I tough. I don't know Ouch. how two are or five are. I haven't seen the, the guys doing the, the uh, 1300 point encounter yet. Let's see if they do at any point of the seat. They, they, they need the thunder spell for it though. Although thunder price is very low I think. Well, it, it got to like 55 on magic 5 or something like that. And it was castable on magic 3 or 4 if, I, if I'm not wrong. 
So Naburu is going to have Thunder, and it's a good thing that he's uh, stopping by here because he's running really low on resources. You think he's going to actually get the life? Maybe not. Is it? There is a life lady in uh, in this town, but I guess he's not going to visit her. He's only got a sliver of health and one one extra life after that. But yeah, uh, you miss I... her after you leave the the spell house, so we okay. still don't know. It doesn't lose that much time, but he's not going for it. Yeah, he should be able to make it uh, to Maze Island as he is. Once he's there, he should be pretty safe uh, with the boots, being able to walk around on all those on all those water tiles. Yeah, one of the reasons to get the boots, I just remember, it's it's Maze Island. This Maze Island is horrible, really horrible without the boots. I, I, I don't know if you can picture that by, by looking at it, <laughs> but it, it was bad. I, I, I oh, had yeah. to trace all the tiles to get both items, and then I, to get back to the palace, it was it was a nightmare. This bot's gonna respawn, isn't he? Uh, maybe not. Uh, yeah, I can tell. That looks pretty nasty. Paratrop is picking up his thunder too, so in that respect, he's pretty—he's not as far from Countess. Uh, there was one more essential item in in here, wasn't there? Uh, the glove. I guess uh, he doesn't want it yet. Uh, but the notes say that uh, GP requires the glove. Yeah, that is correct. Uh, because you see five of the six waffle rooms in GP in the in the route you have to go to. Oh, jeez. To meet Dark Link. Thank, thank goodness they got jump, right? Although yeah, life too. That's, that was another uh, thing too. I was wondering. Will will they get will, will they get jump? Because yeah, that GP. It was terrible without jump. All of, almost all of the waffles were filled with blue chicken, so, so it was terrible God. without the jump spell. That sounds nasty. Almost blocked that one, but uh, almost blocking it means you have a knife in your back. <laughs> oh! Well, good thing you have an aid. And Paratrip is picking up his glove before P3. I, I guess, uh, I guess as far as routing goes, uh, it was quicker for Countess to get uh, the glove on the way out than to go get it and then come back. And that does make sense. Probably saves him, I'm guessing, at least 20 seconds. Yeah, you can see Paratroop uh, doing quite the bulk to go for the glove. Oh, yeah. That, that was at the end of that, that uh, dead end. And the perfect setup on Ravenac here from Countess. Uh, almost. And yeah, so we guess Paratroopa is not doing Palace 3. We'll see what, what, what he chooses. Yeah, that's a little surprising. Palace 3 is one of the easier palaces in the game, but... Um, yeah, you know. this one was a, a tiny bit long. It wasn't the shortest of of palaces three, but but yeah, it's a friendly palace. We'll see what he, what he chooses. There's that attack five, and second gem placed. And now he's going for the glove, so so I guess he's gonna probably get up and a straight out of here. Yeah. And Paratrip is in P four. Is that is that P4? Am I yeah, that is Palace 4. He doesn't have a reflect yet, does he? Yeah, I think he got it somewhere. <laughs> I forgot the town where reflect is. I think I saw it in his menu. It looks like Reflect was in Old Casudo. Uh, yeah, it's a really quick town. I must have missed it for that reason. Of course, so, yeah, I, I was wondering if crazy. they would do four because I thought it was a, a, a little bit long. But yeah, we see Paratrooper in it. So. House four has a very friendly boss, 
So that that's one of the reasons to do Palace 4 if you want to do low low, low level strats. And if you know where all the all those dead ends are, you know, because Palace 4 it's not the worst palace in normal randomizer, but it's really the dead ends that are annoying. And if you know where they all are, it's not gonna be as bad. Looks like we're here. Oh, I, th I thought for sure Kairos was going to get that encounter. <laughs> Guess not. So Kairos is also going for the shield spell. Not a bad choice. It doesn't take too long to get it. Yeah, I suppose... Um... Because he's not grinding at all, you know, he's just gem abusing. Uh, having a little safety against Thunderbird is nice. <laughs> yeah, 7 8 time, Karak is, uh, Karak's a thing. And yeah, keep, Trails, I keep you telling. Have to remember, it is not Sarnax for a 2 and new plane this season. <laughs> it's the guys that were in my group, and that group was very very tight in terms of levels, so yeah, I would pick the, 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 the shield spell too, most probably. I would get shield and life and all the heart containers and uh, cross. Oop. Forced to use thunder there, but uh, used it well. But the up and A pretty much renders that null and void. Hopefully his experience is on track. Yeah. So he's... The Countess is now in Palace 2. I don't know this palace. I don't know how long it is. Oh, oh, what? Uh, oh. I feel like that was a little unintentional from Countess. That uh, red... That red uh, iron knuckle could have just dropped right on top of his head. Yeah, yeah he's gonna be there. Also going into Palestine. It's the right choice to pick up that uh, one life because it, it'll allow him to avoid a death because he was running on pretty low, and uh, he'll still be able to get his gem abuse. And just eke out a little bit more experience. No need for that uh, thunder spell. I mean, no need for that magic that he used the thunder spell for. Uh, but looks like we have a little bit of a high five between Paratroop and Countess. Uh, so Paratroop is right behind him. Nice dodging of the of the Guma's hammers by Paratroop there. Too bad as far as oh yep <sighs> ouch as far as p2s go that's not too bad in terms of the length of palace and yeah paratrooper cut up inside palace too well he Very had nice. one gem behind but it's nice to see a simul simultaneous fight yeah i that's that's great he made up a pretty good amount of time there Countess' shield colors are a little, a little wonky. Getting the, getting the water tile. Why not? I don't know what's in there. <laughs> I didn't get the boots. It's a magic container. Uh, yeah, very useful. Makes sense. They could already cast Thunder, but now he can cast Thunder and Shield or whatever he needs. Yeah. I, I believe Fire was linked to Life? No, I, I'm not sure. <laughs> I, I just forgot. Completely. Hammer is linked. Uh, it says Fire is linked with Reflect. 
So if you got the trophy, which leads to fire, uh, that could help. Um, I don't. I don't think he's gonna do that. Yeah, it looks like his last palace is three or six. And yeah, that was a very yeah. short one. Yeah. If you knew the way, yeah. palace six was one, was one of the shortest one. Yeah, we've already seen three from Countess, so this has to be six, unless. Unless he's found, like, a Palace 9 somewhere that we didn't know about. And Long way to down. Hunter trails GP's um, Valley of Dead, and it's a very short Valley of Dead. No encounters to enter Valley of Dead. Oh my gosh, was that all of the, the drops all in a row? <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Doesn't happen too often. And I believe Barbara is next one. If I'm not, if I'm not hey, Flazy Bum. Um, yeah, this is a randomized version of Zelda 2. Um, hence the Zelda 2 randomizer. But. With a slight change, uh, these guys know what the seeds are like ahead of time. So they're playing it kind of like a vanilla speedrun, but it's a randomized. Oh, oh! Bossy! Oh, it's a <laughs> and uh, Countess. Uh... Oh! Oh, this is. <laughs> you think wow. he's gonna go for the jackhammer at the end? I was about to explain, um, <laughs> but uh, I don't know. <laughs> okay, Barbara's not going to appear on the right. Not likely. Okay, well, there, there he goes. She goes. Highlander impression? <laughs> what, because there can be only one? I don't think anyone ever drowns in lava in Highlander. <laughs> The series is pretty long, and you have a lot of immortal deaths, and I don't remember that one. All oh, right, yeah, forgot. Oops. Well, well cool. thank you for the countess. He finishes Barba on his last life. I bet he wasn't expecting to die twice there. While Paratroopa places his third gem. So, Countess, I believe he's going straight for GP. Yeah, he's on his last life though, so I think he's gonna wait for his experience to take up just in case something horrible happens. Oh, he took attack 7? Okay. He's going for speed. Yep. He's going the distance. He's going for speed. <laughs> True insult. True. <laughs> uh, how many bosses do I have left to kill? Uh, Petra Pass 1, and the Countess has 0, because uh, this particular format is a 4 gem seed. Oh, nice, picking up that life with the swamp is a good idea. And uh, if. If Lazy Bum is still in here. Uh, if you want to see a normal Zelda 2 randomizer race, uh, you can come back tomorrow at uh, 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 uh, Pacific. Basically, come here in 23 and a half hours and you'll see a normal Zelda 2 randomizer race. Yeah, I hope we have a big roundup tomorrow. With the, with the I kind of want to play. I kind of want to play, so I don't know what commentary is going to be like. Okay. We'll problem. see how I feel tomorrow, though. <laughs> yeah, that's important. You need to prepare yourself psychologically to play this game. Yeah. Yeah, you do.
Can there be a useful item? Um, yeah, they can pick up any of the items that they want. It's just a matter of finishing uh, quickly. If, if um, someone thinks that they can still finish quickly while picking up items that are useful, then, you know, good on them. Like Countess wrote it in these, uh, these one-ups, because I guess we got a little bit of a doozy of a GP on the way. And he's also going in there with... Well, I was going to say he was going to go in there with very minimal levels, but with that 500 point P-Bag, looks like he's going to pick up Magic 4, and then everything after that's going to be life levels, which should be refilling him as he's going through the palace. And while Paratroopa is on his last boss, that's pretty exciting. But this is the boss he noped out of before, right? And wasn't he at Maze Island? He was before? at Maze Island, and he just double deep it. It is a pretty short walk to, to the palace from the entrance. And also, GP is kind of close to to, Ma to Maze Island. So that's totally right. And here okay. it is, the thirteen hundred points encounter. Ah, is he gonna do it? Why? <laughs> I guess he doesn't. I guess he doesn't like experience. Why are you spending time going for these five hundred P bucks if you have thirteen hundred points in one encounter, man? Could have done both. <laughs> Could have picked up, could have done the 1300 points with Thunder, picked up another magic level, and then got the 500 point key bag. Yeah. Yeah, we gotta ask them that if, if they checked out that encounter. <laughs> yeah, he may not know about it. I mean, that's absolutely true, Trails, but that's never stopped me from teasing another racer. Never. <laughs> yeah, life. You're one to talk trails. <laughs> so yeah, the count is entering GP on 29 minutes 45 seconds. And we'll see. Paratroop is not going to be that far behind him, which yeah, is like good. But, however, no, knowing the route, it will all depend on on, on, on players taking deaths or not. Yeah. And, well, Paratroopa's levels are a little bit higher in terms of levels. But his Thunderbird fight will be a little bit longer, so yeah. <laughs> Every, anything can happen. And there it is, the downstep required room for the palace. For any new... Uh, new viewers, if you come from the other direction, that is the upstab required room. It's the same room, just in reverse. Yeah, and there are two of those in the great house. Mm -hmm. Ouch! Ouch! No more knives! Ouch! Yeah, this palace is filled with blue knights. A lot of blue knights. Life 5 is pretty good with shield, though. Like, that was... Once he cast shield, uh, he pretty much stopped taking damage from those knives. He had like three knives that hit him, and ouch. That's an ouch. Yeah, so yeah that's... that's an opportunity for, for Paratroopa to catch up. That was at least like 20 seconds or something. Yeah, the worst place to die is... When you're almost through with a room, because then you start at the very beginning, you gotta, gotta do the whole room over again. It's better to die at the beginning. And that's why you'll often see... I mean, obviously, we got a lot of uh, Zelda 2 racers in chat right now, but for those who aren't racers, that's oftentimes why you'll see people intentionally getting hit, um, or intentionally falling into lava. Because they know they're gonna die anyway. So, might as well die in a place where... Um, it's quick. Yeah, this room is one of the reasons that the players got the the jump spell, but things are getting very worrisome for... Well, he has four lives, and he has died twice, so... So yeah, he picked up quite a lot of one-ups in this one. That, that, that is a very good strat. Yeah, I think he picked up three one-ups, or maybe it was just two, but... Yes, it's been three because he has died five and he oh. has four lives. 
As Zarnax was saying earlier, I think, uh, blueberry waffle room. <laughs> blueberry chicken and waffle room. I don't think I would eat blueberries with chicken, but, uh, you know, to each their own. Yeah, I guess curry, curry goes with acid, acid fruit, so it's, it's not that far, far-fetched. I gotta try it some. <laughs> However, you, can, you can't get blueberries here in Colombia. So. You can import them, can't you? Yeah, maybe. <laughs> I've never tasted them here. So. Have you ever had blueberries at all? Yeah, I have them, but, but when I've been in, in the United States. Yeah. They're, like my, they're literally one of my favorite foods in the world. I love blueberries. Like, all berries are pretty good, but blueberries are the best. Blackberries here. That's blackberries okay. and strawberries are, are the ones that, that we get here the most. They're pretty good, yeah, yeah. I mean, strawberries especially are well loved. And Jay Cope is saying he's a fan of a fruit with a meat together. I, I don't know, man. Like steak tartare with strawberries. Like that doesn't seem right. <laughs> But I do like my pineapple pizzas, so... Or my Hawaiian pizzas. Yeah, anything can happen. <laughs> to each their own. S so many lives left. Um, so really, it comes down to... Is Countess... Gonna, like, just fumble this? Because I think his levels are good. Even if... Even if he's slightly off, he should be okay. You'd have to really fumble to, to lose this. I'm assuming Dark Link's pretty soon after Thunder Blade, because we've seen a lot of runes. Yeah, I think Thunder uh, like three or oh four Oh my runes gosh! There. This however, is close! Yeah, really close. And However, the those runes are very tricky to survive. There is a fairy room with with snakes that throw fire, and those are pretty sneaky in a lava field room. I think it's called Hawaiian Pizza 7 8 time because, like, don't you guys love ham and. and pineapple? Like, so, I mean, I. I don't see why you wouldn't put them together. <laughs> it's nice. I like it too. Especially as a kid, I loved it. Yeah, there's, there's a member of the Zelda 2 randomizer community who owns a, a pizza uh, establishment, and he would be screaming right now. However, he, thinks he pulled that the... off the randomizer pizza in his restaurant. <laughs> oh, almost took a death there, Countess. This is called a fun room for a reason, because it's not fun. Yeah. I think we have two rooms to go, if I'm not wrong. Well, three at least. Yeah, I wouldn't put M&M's on pizza, cool boy man Adam, but uh, I like ham with pineapple. Oh god. Oh, we might see a death here from Countess. Nope, had a thunder ready. <laughs> I have a feeling he had that planned the whole time. Oh, but, you know. Ah, oh, lamb would be good. I haven't ever had lamb on pizza. Yeah, that sounds interesting. I hardly ever eat lamb. I mean, there's a there's a Greek place nearby. Greek and eat Greek and something, Turkey or something. But uh, that's probably the only time I have lamb nowadays. Anyway, back on the race. I'm sorry about that, everyone. Um, yeah, Paratroop is doing a really good job. Room in the Countess case and. Paratrooper is like three rooms behind. So yeah, unless something very unusual happens.
you are correct about the Frosty, Jake Harper. But yeah, um... Oh, an unfortunate death for a paratrooper. I think he's uh, still got two lives left, so he should be fine. Um, and there's the Countess winning it. Yeah, how work these rooms and they don't have fairy, man. I felt so comfortable last night having fairy. Now he's on his last life. This could be bad. And GG to the Countess, meanwhile. Yeah. Official SRL time of 38 minutes and 11 seconds. Okay, he does make it through this this fun room. He's gonna take some damage, but that's no big deal. Yeah, Just I think walk. he has this, this one in the bag. Thankfully. Yeah. Yeah, honestly, it looked like Countess had a commanding lead. But at the end of the day, Paratrooper... Uh, yeah, he really held his own. I mean, this is a very close race, all things considered. Yeah, I think the Countess went for, went for the more risky strats. We had a talk after last match, and I told both guys that I thought they were being too cautious because they, they routed the, the seed so much better than I did. They spent more time practicing, but I ended up being like 40 seconds behind. So, yeah, I guess the Countess plan to, 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 to go ahead and, and be more risky in this one and it paid off and and doing the the, the picking up the one ups strat before entering GP was just genius. Yeah. I'm glad you picked up uh, all the one ups you did, Countess, because um, I mean I, there I were a few deaths. I wasn't supposed to take attack seven. <laughs> Oh, oh, we were saying that was supposed to be being, life seven. You were going for the speed. <laughs> uh, the cost of attack seven can get you from life one to life seven. I was gonna do that and take one, get magic three, then get magic four on the way into Great Palace and get magic five off of Thunderbird. But very fortunately, I did that once in practice, so I knew if I picked up all those extra pee bags, it kind of worked out. <laughs> but it cost me at least like a minute and a half. So, uh, Paratrooper finished uh, just a, just a few moments ago with a time of 39 minutes and 44 seconds. He's already in the room with us, so we've got Countess, Paratrooper, and of course Victor Santa Fe and myself in here. So, uh, block party, guys. <laughs> yeah, that was close. It, not really. There, I, I, I couldn't have gotten the time you got, so there must have been something <laughs> you didn't wrap up with me. Uh, I did so some this wasn't really... stuff early, so... Yeah. Like if you did any grinding early on, I skipped that. So and I didn't yeah. have a downstab going to the hammer, which killed me more than a few times in practice. Oh, I didn't. I didn't get downstab until then either. But that didn't matter for me. Yeah, the two spots I was really worried about was hammer because of those that very first encounter you can get in the graves immediately after stepping off the raft has a bunch of invisible moas if you get the little encounter. Yeah. And that, I didn't that. have downstab for it, and downstab really didn't help for it. But then uh, walking to Palace 1 was my first palace, and the uh -huh. Graves and the Swamp both have invisible MOAs, and even with Downstab, it's extremely dangerous. Yeah, that's interesting. I wonder if your palace your palace routing must have been different than mine, because <laughs> I, uh, I... So my route is that I go to Eastern Hyrule, I get uh, Reflect, Hammer, and Shield, and then I reset. I go back and get Downstab and Boots, then sail back to Maze Island, I get the Power Grove, glove and key reset again i don't do three then because it's just too early to do that um then i reset i go to four then i hit eastern hyrule and get two one three and then i go to great palace you must have done it differently and it must have been faster yeah i did one three two and six but like no matter six. how you routed the seed you were gonna get uh backtracking <laughs> you went to six what six <laughs> yeah it almost, cost him, it almost cost him the game too <laughs> Wow. Was... Okay, I I did not expect that. I I wrote off six like really early in my planning. Well, I decided like just looking at the spells, like life was never getting cheaper, and all the other safety spells I could pick up weren't very good. So my very first draft had me just sticking at magic one until like the end of the game because you could yeah. cast Met Thunder with one jar. But uh, so my plan was to pump up attack first, and at attack six, Barb is fine. Uh, I see. But. I just figured six was going to be slower than any of the other palaces I did, but I guess it wasn't. I just didn't really look into it, I guess. 
Now, there were quite a few rooms, but it was like five drops in a row, so those are fast. Ah, uh, yeah, that's true. So I have a question for both of you guys. Did you guys know there was a 1300 point encounter? No. No. Okay. The, in the way to GP, there was an encounter where there were two blue Lysafos and each gave you 500. An orange Lysafo and a Scorpion Max. So, yeah, I I'm thought awaited. both of you guys were going to spam that when I played this one casually last night. But where I was, where was it? to see that neither of you did. Where was it? Uh, it was... You even was that got tiles? an encounter. It was a very mm -hmm. laggy encounter in... I oh, that one. Yeah, I avoided that one. Like, the plague is so Valuable. laggy. And yeah, casting... I I'd have to cast... On the south. Yeah, the forest on the south. I know where that is. Um, I mean, casting thunder is so expensive that I don't know how to spam it, really. It might have been faster than getting the pea bags, which I did instead, but mm, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I only picked up one of the pea bags in the east intentionally, but then when I accidentally took attack seven instead of life seven, I picked up all oh. of them to fix oh, it. Oh, wow. Yeah, my, my ending levels are five, five, seven, so your attack grinding was probably a big deal because um, I probably just had way worse attack. My Thunderbird was probably way slower. Yeah, I was supposed to end 6, 5, 7 getting Magic 5 off of Thunderbird but I ended up like 7, 5, whatever my life was. I think another 5. <laughs> That's funny. I think we were all pretty impressed by the Countess's uh, walk uh, starting from mm. uh, Northern Palace. <laughs> Yeah, it only had like three manipulations in this one because Great Palace or North Palace was shoved against the edge of the map. In my last seed, I had like six unique ones I was doing, but this one I was able to just do the same three over and over and just get off at earlier spots. Just walked past all the places. Yeah, it was, it was pretty impressive to see. And yeah, yeah, I I couldn't possibly win one of these races against something <laughs> like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, th this run has so much annoying overworld travel that uh, I had some really bad encounter luck at, at a couple of points. Although my run ended up being uh, pretty close to my PB, so it doesn't really matter that much. But yeah, a lot of the overworld travel in this one is annoying. Yeah, I think uh, watching the other th races, uh, Zarnax was the only other person I've noticed doing encounter manipulation so far. But I heard Max say that he's got some plan for the next race, so the next yeah, Bay I match should be good. I don't really do. I don't. I don't really know how to do encounter minute. I'm mostly winging it. Um, my my first encounter in the run is manipulated because it's always I, it's always in the same place. But uh, after yeah. that, I'm kind of like I don't know what I'm doing. Yeah, I just uh, dodge them and don't get into any more because I think once you get into a encounter or a town or a cave, you can't do it anymore. You have to do them off of an up A. So just right, uh, yeah. You save states, walk until you get into a fight, then back up, try to dodge it, etc. That makes sense. Countess uh, was so aggressive, <laughs> you know, like going so low level, so, you know, so um, geared toward attack, you know, going east as soon as possible, uh, that it, it, it really seemed like he was going to be like three or four minutes ahead um, at, at a certain point, but Paratrippy really pulled it up and and made up a lot of time in some places um to to end less than two minutes um behind him so i think he did a really good job yeah i think my, probably my route was just a little bit more conservative and focused on um avoiding deaths and stuff uh but uh yeah i mean it went pretty clean as far as i, I except for that one last room before dark link which i died twice on i'm really glad i didn't die three times on because uh I was not going to go into this GP with fewer than five lives. Absolutely not. This GP yeah, is I played, awful. I, I played that one with, I played that GP with Perry, and, and those fun rooms were really easy that way. <laughs> oh, that man. When I saw that neither of you guys got Ferry, I was like, oh, these GPs. Ferry is too far out of the way. You have to go to get the medicine out of like Palace 3 or something. It's just, nah, no. Yeah, it also doesn't yeah. get too cheap either. Yeah, it's really not that helpful. But unfortunately, it means there's two rooms in GP that are just scary. Yeah, that one with the four bird knights and the spicy chicken, I was thundering the first three and then just damage boosting off the spicy chicken to get past it with shield. Yeah, I, 
I died on that one twice. The first time I got through the the chickens really quick, but then I got fireballed and knocked into the lava. It's like ah, God. yeah. I, this is after the run was already over anyway, so it didn't really matter. But uh, and there... I was like, I really would like to finish this run and not forfeit. <laughs> and I I got through it though. And that room like yeah, basically we... cost me a life because casting thunder plus shield, then I don't have jump for the very last room. So right, and uh, the jump is basically noxious. required in this seed. Like I I yeah. you could beat it without jump, but why? So, so there are a lot of deaths in GP that are just necessary just to get your magic back because there's yeah. so many waffle rooms and they all have bird knights in them. <laughs> oh god, I like that. There's the one room that where you get like a ton of slowdown, and I tried <laughs> thundering at the start of it, but it doesn't even help because it because it ends up spawning a bird knight later that despawns if you don't kill with thunder. So it's like wow. there's nothing you can do. It just slows <laughs> down no matter what. Like all right. So there's at least 30, 21 birds in that route. Okay. Yeah, there's one that despawns if you don't thunder the two at the that start. puts and five so, in that room alone. Yeah, there's five in that room. It's ridiculous. The seed is is obnoxious. <laughs> yeah, my I was actually hoping I could get through this tournament, whether I win or get eliminated, without ever picking up shield. But that great palace broke that in the oh, second yeah, round. Yeah. So. I, I, I think you absolutely need shield for this. I mean, you, yeah, my... you could do it without, but it would be hard. <laughs> I would, not, I would not trust myself to pull it off on one try. My split name for that one is Shameful Shield plus Palace yeah. 2. <laughs> no shame, in my opinion. So Sarnax42 was telling us that this was the the Blueberry Chicken and Waffle Rooms Palace. And we're uh -huh. going to ask you, what do you think about the possibility of having Blueberry Chicken and Waffles? <laughs> I don't really like blueberries that much. <clears throat> yeah, I don't know. It's not, not my favorite. It'd be okay. I've never actually had a meal of chicken and waffles, so I have. I, it's, I like waffles. I like chicken, but the two of them together are just too filling. They yeah. just make me feel gross afterwards. <laughs> I, I feel sorry for uh, for my boy here, Victor, who who doesn't have blueberries in his local markets. <laughs> oh. Yeah, we don't, but we have a lot of fruits, and they are nice, thankfully. <laughs> I don't know if we have them year-round here or not. Yeah, they're more seasonal, usually. Well, uh, so, looks like Countess is going to be advancing, and um, unfortunately, uh, we're going to be saying goodbye to you, Paratrooper, but... Uh, for anyone who uh, is watching casually, like, what? It's just the second week and Paratroop is already gone. Technically, this is like the semifinals or something, right? <laughs> Quarters, basically, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, there'll be two matches, I guess, for finals grouped. Three people yeah. in it. Yeah, I'm kind of bummed that our group only had three people. I did want to do more races, but, I mean, I could have been eliminated second anyway. So, you know, what are you going to do? Um, so that's, that's too bad. But I did have a lot of fun with this tournament. I really think that this style of play is super interesting. I'm really excited to go see what Countess did, because it sounds like you played this seed a lot more aggressively than I did, and I'm really interested to see how that turned out for you. Um, just, the, just the different routing styles and uh, things in these in these runs are just really interesting to think about, and I'm really looking forward to seeing how the rest of this tournament plays out. Yeah, I was very worried about the Countess, but when I saw that he picked up three one-ups, I said, wow, this is a very good idea. <laughs> oh yeah, absolutely necessary. I've because... never gotten through that GP with fear than three deaths, not even once. I've done like fifteen runs. Yeah, same. Yeah, my my biggest worry today was the uh, when I was walking to P one, I died before I even got to the water, and usually I die at least once walking into P one from the water because of those nasty swamp and uh, desert or uh, grave yeah. encounters. <laughs> yeah, those are all. Those was all the encounters are terrible. Very fortunate to. I don't think I died in that walk. I actually so had I was to do. Feeling, I had to do a little the run after that. Yeah, I actually had to do a little bit of improv here because uh, after I I skip life seven um, after palace one to get attack five. Like I need like two hundred three experience after that. But then 
I had an encounter where a blue Moa hit me like five times and left me with not <laughs> enough XP. So I was like, okay, I have to fight some stuff. I'm like, I don't know how much XP they're worth, but whatever, I'll just do it in house three. It worked out, but it was like, oh god, blue Moa's. I almost considered getting the cross, but I think it's too it's too out of the way though. Actually, in Palace 1, I had a problem with having XP stolen in practice where I needed 240 XP for to get past Magic 2, I think. And then Force yeah. Head's worth 20, so I killed a Rope for 20, and then I killed two Skeletons for 100 apiece. But then I kept getting hit by the Skull Heads at the very bottom floor. And they take oh, if they God. took anything at all, then I had to kill like three right. of them to yeah. make it back. Yeah, it's it's really interesting. This the experience routing <laughs> in this uh, style of randomizer is really fun because yeah. you get to plan out like you get to know what everything is and where everything is so uh you can make really detailed experience routes but then you get to do improv if they go wrong and the more you know about like what random enemies have what xp like it's it's just really interesting that you can do that and in a normal randomizer that doesn't really come to play as yeah. much so that's just fun thing yeah, that definitely helped me here when i accidentally took attack seven and i had it's good that that happened to me in practice like i said because i knew i could go pick up 1200 xp worth of point bags in the east get an extra one up and then hope it works out yeah, fortunately yeah. attack five or life five was pretty strong i think with shield thunderbird only hit me for about a bar so <laughs> i end up i get i get life five at like three minutes in this run i start i start <laughs> with a grind because uh the small enemies drop blue jar 200 500 500 500 500, 500. yeah so I just hit Moblins until I got uh, 3 3 5, and then uh, that just helped me a lot in the early game. Um, I don't think that actually wasted too much time because it only takes me two minutes to do that grind, and I think it helps save time later. But I still think that your experience route was probably better in the long run. So yeah, I'll have to go back and look and see what the differences were. A couple of life levels early would have been good. It just probably would have messed with me trying to pump up attack levels. Yeah, that makes Which... sense. I just don't trust myself to uh, <laughs> go super low level to try to get my attack up. It's just, ugh, I don't know. Yeah. It sounds like if you had made a couple of more mistakes that I might have been able to win, so I don't feel too bad about this. My par time was 40 minutes and I got under that, so I'm pretty happy about it. Yeah. Yeah, my average was close to 40 as well. Yeah. I think my sum of best was pretty close to 35, though. There was a Holy lot cow. I lost time in this yeah I, every attempt like i said your time i don't think i could have hit that time with the route i took i think sub 39 is probably my ideal like that's that's optimal for me and i don't think i was going to do any better than that without some route changes and i just didn't want to get yeah. that aggressive because i just just hoping like if i play a solid run then i should have a decent chance of winning and we'll see how it goes and that's how it went well guys um yeah Congratulations again to Countess and, uh, you know, Paratroopa. Uh, they, they put up a great fight and it was exciting this whole time. And, um, yeah, give them a follow. Uh, watch, you know, watch their, their channels because they're going to be practicing. Um, well, these races are going to be in the, the randomizer tomorrow. And um, I'm sure they've got some other stuff going on. Uh, but uh, we got to start uh, prepping for the next uh, event on ZSR here. Uh, thanks very much to them for the... For the hosting and uh specifically to ricky of kokiri and uh thanks for victor santa fe for being the 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 dude who uh volunteered for comms today i i was just here as co comms so uh thanks a lot to him and i think ricky of kokiri also did tracking no i know it was only two oh, players so alan heffley did the tracking all by himself oh cool, cool. all right yeah then. so there you go all right, thank you so much. Thank you to Nightcrawler and Victor Santa Fe for the commentary. It was awesome. Thank you to the Alan Heffley for tracking for us. Thank you especially to the Cowness and Paratrooper for the awesome match. It was great to watch. Coming up on ZSR in just a few moments, we have the Zelda 2 100% No Major Glitches tournament match coming up. So don't go anywhere. I'm going to end the stream momentarily, and then we'll be right back. So don't go away. Bye! Good night, everybody.
reset you. Check it. No, it's alright. 